Look, may I join with you seriously and emphatically saying that I am fed up to the back teeth with all this stuff about the voice and why we're almost second class citizens if we dare to think about voting no. Quite simply, what makes me sick and tired of this is the rank ingratitude, not of Indigenous Australians, the ingratitude of Indigenous activists. Not a thank you for the fact that year after year, Australians put their hand in their pockets via taxes to provide for Indigenous Australians. Where does the money go? 55% of Australia is under native title. The mining royalties go to Indigenous Australians. Where the hell does that money go? And the S campaign is now using John Farnham's You're the Voice. Well, the lyrics of the song say, try and understand it. I wish we could. I was with Indigenous Australians on Friday. They didn't understand it. Our country's got 3,352 registered Aboriginal corporations. What is this lie about that we need a voice? The Prime Minister already has an Indigenous Advisory Council. That is a voice to the Prime Minister himself. There are more than 30 land councils. There's a thing called the Council of Peaks, which represents 70 Aboriginal corporations. Pardon the language, but how many bloody voices do you want, you ungrateful militant activists? We provide $40,000 million of hard-earned cash every year to close the gap, $40 billion. The Aboriginal population is officially 3.8%. There are 11 Aboriginal MPs in the parliament, all with a voice, representing 4.8% of the parliament. Voices and money everywhere. Look at the Harbour Bridge. An Aboriginal flag flies enjoying equivalence with the national flag. And no one seems to have the guts to say this is ridiculous. A symbol of a minority enjoying parity with a flag that represents all of Australia. If Indigenous Australians are part of Australia, they are represented by the national flag. Take the Aboriginal flag down, but oh no, the militant minority, the ungrateful minority say, the Australian flag, according to the Uluru Statement from the Heart, symbolises the injustices of colonisation. So what do we do? Roll over and cop it? Roll over and surrender? Oh, we're a tough lot, aren't we? Just watch our ABC. They now don't broadcast a story from Goulburn, but rather from Burbong. Yeah, change the place names to accommodate a handful of activists. Rank and file Aboriginals, to whom I speak, think this is ridiculous. We don't have stories from Melbourne. We cross to a reporter in Nam. Remember Lydia Thorpe doesn't want a voice. She doesn't even want a treaty. She wants sovereignty. Are we going to roll over and cop all this stuff or emphatically vote no? Recently, we were told that Indigenous Australians and First Nations people, whomever they are, we have no definitions, but they're from across the globe, they're going to be offered ticket discounts of up to $170 under new mob ticks concessions launched by the nation's elite ballet, musical arts and cultural sporting bodies and institutions. Special mob discounts of up to 80% for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, Maori, Pacific Islanders and other First Nations people. But there was no nation until we were colonised, but that's for another day. All this bribery in the run up to a referendum. No proof of eligibility is required to access the tickets. And those who identify as a certain race or ethnic group will have their details kept confidential. Support for the referendum sinks, so out comes the money. So who's in this gig of discounts of up to 80%? Sydney Opera House, Australian Ballet, National Gallery of Australia. Hey, get in on here, just say you're in, hello, I'm Indigenous. I need the 80% discount. Sydney and Melbourne Symphony Orchestras, the Australian Tennis Open, music festivals. Mr Albanese boasted in the parliament that, quote, every major business in Australia is supporting the Yes campaign. And he named them. Woolworths, Coles, Telstra, BHP, Rio Tinto, the Business Council of Australia, the AFL, the NRL, Rugby Australia, Netball Australia. We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis and these big corporations purport to speak on behalf of their organisations at a time when the distrust of the corporate sector is at record levels, witness Qantas. All of this provides a powerful reason why we should vote no. And when the vote comes in and the referendum is defeated, the boards of those corporations should have the decency to do what the British Prime Minister David Cameron did when he lost the Brexit vote, resign. One writer, Professor David Barton, has had the guts to speak the truth. 
He argues that what passes as so-called Aboriginal culture is an invention of the last 50 years. Dr. Barton, Professor David Barton has written, quote, the Aboriginal industry is chock full of ill-informed urban myth makers and illusionists. This cast of urges and deluded pretenders giving rise to the patronising insistence on the uniqueness of Aboriginal knowledge about everything from agriculture and fish farms, as in Bruce Pascoe, water and fire management, as in cultural burning, to Aboriginal art, fashion and even astronomy. Not to mention Ernie Dingo's thoroughly, this is what he said, not to mention Ernie Dingo's thoroughly overdone welcome to country. Writes Professor Barton, this is mostly snake oil fakery an effort to convince contemporary Australians that the Aborigines of old was something they clearly never were." Unquote. Professor Barton continues, Meanwhile, the recent invention, exaggeration, distortion and misrepresentation of the alleged frontier wars serves as a made-to-order replacement history, intended to raise the status of Aboriginal people and degrade that of settlers. The goal? He says, Professor Barton, is an attempt to paint, paint a genocidal racism as Australia's original sin. Professor Barton goes on with the guts to say it as it is, quote, self-determination means we will do what we like and you can pay for it. Self-determination is about undermining white fella institutions, judiciaries, organisations and bureaucracies. Examples of self-determination can be found in the ban on climbing Ayers Rock, Uluru, Mount Warning, Wollumbin, Mount Gillen and many Grampian climbs, all for ill-defined or unexplained cultural reasons. Australian place names are also being rapidly overwritten, he says, with most likely made up Aboriginal names. He says, all this is about claims to ownership, to sovereignty. These changes should not be mistaken for deference to Aboriginal culture. It is no more, no less than an insidious takeover, says Professor Barton. What we are experiencing here is cultural guerrilla warfare, the picking off of one target after the other. He says, don't believe it. Look no further than what has happened in New Zealand, unquote. I'll be talking again tomorrow night to the former New Zealand Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters about just this. Australians have a simple challenge if they have the stomach and the guts to embrace it. We want to acknowledge the wanderers, the convicts, the migrants who survived a harsh existence, but who were here, well, who knows, 40 to 60,000 years ago. We acknowledge them. No medicine, no writing, no agriculture, no animal husbandry, no sailing ships, no stone buildings, and they survived. And then British institutions brought us science and philosophy, construction, British law, fossil fuel energy, the enlightened inspiration of Renaissance thinking, political leaders past and present, whose decisions helped us with lifestyle advantages and innovation in science and mining, agriculture, manufacturing, medicine, literature and education. Our military forces who protected our freedoms and our way of life. Grateful Australians thank all of those people for what they did to our country. The whinging, whining, ungrateful minority of Aboriginal activists who've become well-educated and well-paid should be told quite simply, promote the yes case, but not with taxpayers' money. By all means, argue your position, but give an open commitment that without violence and retribution, you will accept the outcome if, as it is bound to be, an emphatic no. And if you haven't the decency to stop vilifying those who disagree with you, at least find the decency to express gratitude for the education that you've received and the opportunities that have come with it. And try to understand that Australians are mystified as why you Aboriginal activists seem to hate this country so much.